In today's YouTube video, we're going to be breaking down part two of our West Coast Offensive Guide. And this uh, part, we're going to be going over a play that looks very similar to Mesh Post, but it's actually going to go in a little bit of a different direction and put some more stress on your user, especially if they start cross manning or things like that. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video today. Now, if you've never been to my YouTube channel, we're in a little bit of a series right now on our West Coast uh, offensive scheme. So if you missed one of the old episodes, um, I'm going to put a playlist in the description of this video uh, for you guys that will allow you to get all access to all those videos. We also have a um, the full guide um, is available uh, in my text message membership. So if you uh, are interested in joining my text message membership, all you got to do is text me. Uh, my number is 812- 216-3644 and I'll get you those videos. But basically what we do here is we uh, try to get better at Madden every single day and uh, we try to help people get better at Madden every single day as well through breaking down different route concepts, different tips, different strategies, different tactics that you can implement into your own game uh, to be more effective as a Madden player. So we upload videos every single day at 2 o'clock, at 4 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time and every single night we live stream at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time and basically answer any questions you have about Madden. Uh, we talk Madden uh, pretty much 24-7 as well in our Discord. If you want to join that, there is a link in the description for that video. But the play I want to talk about today is Deep Attack. Now, uh, as you can see here, it says Concept Portland, and this is one of my favorite plays in Madden 21. In, in fact, I think this might be um, – the it's, it's close – it's, it's not quite as effective as Pat's sale, I will admit, but it's close. And um, we're going to we're gonna use this. Um, now, Pat's sale is the play that we broke down in our New England uh, offensive guide that we just released, which if you want a free one-hour sample on that guide, go ahead and shoot me a text. That's in our text membership as well. But uh, what you'll see from this is we're actually going to – so for Mesh Post – Basically, the way we set up mesh post was effectively this. We had um, two drags, a flat, a little – two drags, two flats, and a post route. And then we motioned this guy in, and we motioned – or we motioned him out, motioned him back in, and then we motioned him back out. That little three-pronged attack to the motion does a good job for being able to help him uh, get more open, get more separation. So now we're going to do that, but we're going to do that very similar, uh, but instead it's going to go in a little bit of a different direction. Right, so we're going to run the play deep attack. Now, from deep attack, what I like to do is I like to use the slot as a clear out route for the deep zones. So basically, what you'll see is I'm going to streak um, Chris Godwin. From that point right there, I'm going to take. Um, and, and again, if if I don't if I don't think that you know if, if I'm if I'm facing like just straight up, you know I don't know what he's going to do. Typically, I'll streak Godwin if I know that he's you know, more of a, you know, he's not going to want to get anything over the top, then I will just hitch him. So either streak or hitch him. And honestly, based on alignment, like press man, you're going to, you're going to streak him off man. You know, you're going to hitch him stuff like that. Um, different, different types of, of, of flavors to this. But, but anyways, I'm typically going to streak Godwin. I'll take Gronk and I'll put him on a flat and then I'll take Miller and put him on a drag. And basically I'm going to motion Miller out, motion him in, and then I'm going to motion him back out and snap the ball right here. And what you'll see is against man, you're going to have your running back uh, to the quick flat. The next thing that you're going to have um, against man-to-man -man coverage is you're going to have this little drag route to Scotty Miller. Um, and this is going to be coming open at multiple points uh, within this play. So, he again, this looks exactly the same. But what you'll see is now that he's unpressable, He's going to be basically unstoppable uh, as far as drags go for man-to-man. -man. As long, you know, and again, if you're playing, you know, if that's Jalen Ramsey out there, he's going to give it a little bit better of a, of a run for its money. But what I want you to know is um, the, thing that, the thing that is also going to happen is if you have a better receiver. So, like, let's say you have uh, Chad Johnson and Mutt or, or even Jerry Judy and Mutt will get the job done for you. So, anyways, what I like about this play specifically – I really like having a powerful post route on the left side of the gun bunch, and that's what this play affords you uh, the opportunity to have. This route on the left side, especially, again, the better receiver, the better the route's going to work. But it works fine, and what you'll notice is he's going to automatically get that inside position, take that little quick little step cut to the inside, and he's going to be able to beat man-to-man -man coverage. Now, of course, 
everything that I'm telling you as far as how we're going to attack the defense underneath is going to increase and be even better um, if we're attacking them in their off coverage man. If they're an off coverage man, what you'll see is this drag is going to run free. He's going to be wide open over the middle of the field. The other thing that you'll be able to do is you'll be able to run a hitch to your slot, your, your left side slot. You can always put him on a hitch um, because obviously he is on the line of scrimmage in the bunch, which helps a little bit. So you could run something like this, you know, and basically if they're using underneath, they're going to have to choose between the hitch or the little drag route. Uh, so you have that option as well. The next thing that you're going to have as far as if they go over top coverage is what you'll notice on this backside here is this route to Mike Evans is just going to get underneath it and he's going to run that nice little nice little post route uh, right over the middle. So it's really, really good against man. Pretty much every route wins. Um, if you want your tight end to win, just put him on a little out route. Um, so something like this right here, these little motioned ins and outs, and they're just kind of natty and they just do a really, really good job. You know, you can see here this little, you know, this is just a nice little combination. And as you can see, you know, as long as he makes that catch there, you know, that's going to be a, an easy five yards, uh, for him to go. You used to be able to put your tight end on zig, but unfortunately you can't, uh, within this formation anymore. Uh, you can obviously put him on a block and release to the flat if you wanted to. I actually think that's not a terrible idea, but by having him on a snap throw, uh, to the flats, then what you're able to do is you're basically able to peek it, right? Uh, you can see if he's open or not, um, and oftentimes he'll serve as a uh, a little bit of a pick route for your for your drag that's coming underneath that. So that's how you run it against man-to-man -man coverage. Now against zone coverage, um, I want to show you a little bit about this play. And the first thing that I want to show you is obviously your underneath stuff, right? If they're if they're not, what you'll notice here on the left side, um, you see that. If he, if he gets that little outside cut, outside release against that cover two press, you can hit that route quick uh, if you want to try to test it. The backside, I, I would not hit the tight end against cover two just because of where he's at uh, on this. I mean, you could try. You see right here, I mean, you could hit him, and if you get that kind of animation, that's going to be an, an instant, you know, three to four yards. But... I think cover two is in general going to do a little bit better of a job against that hard flat um, or against that flat route to the tight end. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to force feed them that. Uh, I want to show you this backside flat here. So you're looking right, no, looking left. And see how you have this window here? Now, I actually love this flat route. And the reason I love this flat route to the back is because of the alignment of the formation and what all is happening. You're going to be able to throw this flat route I guess a lot of stuff. Um, you know, you might not be able to throw it against every single thing that somebody's going to do, but against a lot of stuff, like if that lineman, basically what I'm doing is I'm reading that lineman. If that lineman blitzes, then I'm throwing it. And, and it's honestly almost sometimes that simple. Let me show you hard flats on the left side. You'll see here hard flats. You see, I can automatically see that it's hard flats and I can just hit the, hit the, hit the route to Mike Evans. And it's a quick snap, snap decision. So if they're playing hard flats, you're going to know on that outside in that cover two. If they're not playing hard flats, let's say that they take the linebacker in the middle of the field and they put him on a hard flat. Let's just say, because this is a very popular uh, Mabel coverage concept, something that you're going to see uh, from the gun bunch. So let's say that they're playing that, that Mabel coverage on that backside uh, within this defense. Well, take a look here. You can still hit that. You can still hit that. Snap, get it out there. You get two yards. You know, and again, is that the best decision? No, but it op it forces them to have to think about it. Every now and then, I'll just throw it. Even if they get it stopped, I'll just throw it because I want them to know that I'm committed to throwing the flats. I want That's the biggest thing. You have to make people aware that you are committed to throwing the ball to your back and to your tight end in this offense. Otherwise, what you might as well do is you might as well just block them. You truly might as well just block your running backs, uh, match protect on every play. So I'm going to force feed it a little bit here. Um, when you pass lead it up, he kind of gets that back shoulder where he turns around, you know, so so you can do that. Um, obviously, you're not getting anything, you know, and that's fine. Uh, again, that's going to, you know, we're going to get, we're going to, what that is is it's um, it, it's basically reminding them that you're going to be committed to throwing the flats, right? That's, that's pretty much what you're trying to do with that. Now, on the back side here, what I want to show you is, this streak to the to the little slot receiver here up the seam um, is going to pull that middle read, and you'll see you'll be able to throw that that route late 
um, you can throw this post route at several different points. Um, you'll see if you smart route it, it turns into kind of a slant route. Um, I'm not necessarily 100% sold on these routes. You will see that it does beat man, or, you know, like, uh, again, and, of course, good old Shaq Barrett reminds me that practice mode is absolutely rigged for uh, block shed, so we're just going to have to block him um, or put him on a spy. But what you'll notice right here, and part of running that flat to the tight end is for what you can do late in this. Again, we're kind of trying to prepare ourselves um, to get a lot of max coverage. So I think you will get a lot of max coverage when you're playing a bunch. But what you'll see here is this route will come all the way across the formation. As you can see, it crosses all the way across, and you're going to be able to, That's why you streak that um, that route to Godwin. He's going to pull all the zones, and so it's going to force... Um, it's going to force a specific type of, of defense for them to be able to stop that deep attack post route late in the play. Um, obviously, if they're blitzing you on either side, you know, one of one of these routes is going to be open um, for you to be able to take advantage of this little drag route um, or that route right there. I don't know what Edwards was on. Was he on a – was that a hook zone? I can't remember. I don't know what he was on right there. Um, let me take a look at that real quick. Yeah, I think – no, he was on the mid-read. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, because we didn't um, – so, again, remember, they're going to do something like this. I mean, I could pretty much bet you money they're going to do something like this right here. You know, and then on the back side, they may have some vert hooks. Um, but just because of the poor alignment that this, this bunch formation causes, sometimes it changes the zones of players. But what I'm trying to show you here is a lot of times people are going to run two vert hooks or they're going to run two purples or Mabel or something. And what that does is it really opens up this middle. And so what you'll see here, he's still just running. And it's just a hard right pass lead. And you see that cover two, it's a late read, but it's kind of anticipating a max coverage. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say max coverage. You're going to see something like this. Uh, I almost guarantee it, right? You could see something like this. It's it's really not that uncommon. Um, but you would, you would basically see something effectively um, – effectively like this right here you know you might have a three rack or or whatever but you've you've double you've mabled both sides and then you're dropping some underneath yellows just to stop the the quick drags and, and things like that you know you may blitz one or two people right this is a very common defense now with this play in particular occasionally depending on what i'm depending on what i think they're going to do if i think they're in zone coverage i'll snap miller right here so he gets across the formation a little bit sooner to pull those backers down but as you can see here, again, he's just going to kind of get in a void in the zone defense that is very advantageous to your offense. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you cover three. And um, we're just going to go with this right here. Uh, obviously, you're going to have flats on both sides. Um, so just, you know, I just want to show you this post route. You, cover three is basically you're just trying to say, okay, where's the, you know, where's the opening? Um, and typically within a cover three defense, you can hit the quick flats if they're playing them if they're not playing hard flats if they're playing hard flats then obviously you're going to have to you know do you know make some adjustments within this but what you'll see is this post route hard you're just going to hard right it as hard right pass lead and as you can see that's going to beat that cover three max coverage defense the one defense that i feel like is going to be you know kind of somewhat decent against this is a cover four the problem with a cover four is you can throw all over it underneath so you're going to have underneath it pretty much at every volume of this. But I do want to show this just because I want to, I want you to see the different coverages that they're going to have to run, the different types of zones they're going to have to run to be able to take this away. So you take this post route. You see, I could have thrown it early. You see, if I try to throw it late, it doesn't quite, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of not really there for you, right? Um, one thing that you can do. Um, if you we have we have uh, beaters in this for cover four, cover three, cover two, but these are some of the to me power and counter plays, and we'll get into some of the constraint theory plays here in just a moment. But um, what I want to show you really quickly against this cover four, again this is just cover four max coverage. But if you take a look here on the left side, I can throw this ball right there, and it's an easy click on you know secure catch. So I can still hit it, I just can't hit it late. Um, as well because there's nothing on the outside and that's where sometimes what I'll do with Godwin is I'll put him on a fade uh, just to kind of give him a chance uh, to be able to pull uh, to pull these zones for a late read so what you'll see here 
Um, this is cover four. You see that outside quarter is just kind of sitting. You see how he sits right on it. Um, that's the ad advantage to having an outside quarter is it stops a lot of these, you know, across the across the formation uh, type of plays. But everything else, right? Cover three, um, cover three press, cover three sky, cover three deep half. You're going to be cooking. I mean, you're going to be playing really, really good ball uh, against that. Obviously, you still have the window to throw that post. And really, that post is kind of your primary read on this. But you'll see here, cover three, um, you see right there. Uh, well, he did sit on that well. So maybe I'm wrong. But but typically, what you'll be able to do is you're, you're, that, that streak's going to run it off. Now, most people, when they play bunch, they're not going to play cover three and cover four. Because if they play cover three and cover four, the next play in our video, uh, the next play in our guide is going to show you how to beat that. What they're going to do is they're going to play cover two or they're going to play cover three invert. Those are the more popular things that you're going to see. I just want to show you the routes here um, and show you kind of what their adjustments are going to be. But if they go to something like a cover three, um, you'll see here, I can pass lead him up. You see that right there? I could do that against the cover three. And again, that's what the advantage is to him being such a late um, coming across the formation, you know, really, really design. That's that's what we're trying to get is because if they do go max coverage now, um, you have a very good a very good answer to what they're trying to accomplish. And I'll show you here on cover four, uh, cover four won't work as well. You see, he kind of gets behind him. So, you know, it's just you're basically looking at where's the space. Do I pass lead him outside or do I pass lead him over the top of the defense? Let me show you this cover four one more time. And I just want to show you this is like, again, this is max coverage. Now, to be fair to the defense, most of the time their user is going to go guard him. But what I could tell you is probably going to happen is they're going to start guarding him and then they're going to go down to, you know, one of your check down reads, whether it be your flat, you're, you're going to start. At this point right here, you're going to playmaker, right? Playmaker. So at that point, you know you can kind of, you can kind of start to mess with them a little bit based on where you playmaker. You know, one simple thing you can do, um, like with your, is you could drag drag your tight end so that that route gets over there a little bit quicker. And then what you could do is you could basically take uh, Scotty Miller when you motion him back in, put him on a little hitch route. And then essentially, whenever you motion him out, he's just going to be right in this little pocket here on a little hitch. And uh, this defense, now you can playmaker him. And so they're going to be worried about that. They're going to come off of him. And then you can obviously hit that route um, late across the formation. I want to show you one more time. I, my timing's been a little bit off on this. So let me just show this to you really quickly. But again, that's another little variance that you could do uh, from this that's going to be very, very effective. And again, you do have to have a ton of time. You know, I'm not saying that you don't have to have a ton of ton of time. But right here, just a simple little, you know, little route. But you know, cover four with that outside quarter is going to stop it. But there's several things that you can do um, to combat that. You know, you can easily run your tight end on a little hitch, and then you could take Scotty Miller here and essentially put him on a hitch. But he's going to kind of almost be on a flat at the same time. He's going to suck a lot of those zones down. And that's going to allow you another window to be able to hit this post. The reason this play is so good is because it looks exactly the same as mesh post. So your, your opponent is going to be thinking that they have to guard the post on the right side coming from right to left. And now instead they're going to have to guard a post coming from left to right all the way across the formation. And it looks exactly the same. That, to me, is the power of the gun bunch. So that's part two of the guide. Let me know if you guys enjoy videos like this, if you would like me to do more videos uh, like this for different playbooks as well. Um, uh, of course, we will finish out the West Coast playbook, um, having a lot of fun uh, working out of this one. So uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos, and hopefully you're seeing kind of how you can take one play that's really good and another play that's really good and use them together to build – somewhat of a um, kind of a, a baseline of an offensive scheme that is going to start to kind of build uh, video by video. So our next video um, is going to come out at 6 o'clock p.m. today. We'll have another video at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time today. And then we will be live streaming tonight 
at uh, 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So if you are interested in coming by the stream, we'd love to connect with you. We'd love to talk Madden with you. And, um, and, and last but not least, guys, make sure if you haven't already texted in to get my text message membership, I really believe that it is worth it. Um, it's completely free to you to pick that up. All you have to do is shoot me a text message. My number is 812-216-3644. And here's the deal with a text message membership. Basically, every single week, we give you a video that is very, very high level and very, very in-depth that teaches you how to do something in the game, whether it be offensively or defensively. And they're normally 45 minutes to an hour and a half long. One of the guys that picked it up said this membership is better than a lot of the ebooks that he has paid for in Madden 21. So one, it's completely free to you. All you got to do is pull out your cell phone right now and shoot me a text message. Say, hey, Cody, I'd like to receive the text message videos. And then I'll send you a playlist that updates every single week. And we'll send you a text every single week whenever it updates, of course. But um, right now, I believe there's eight videos in that playlist, which means that there's probably over eight hours of content in that playlist, both on the defensive and offensive side of the ball that gives you the tools and the tactics and the schemes to be able to take your Madden game uh, to the next level. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. I hope it was helpful. Um, and I would just ask that you subscribe and uh, be keeping up with everything that we're doing on the channel. I'd love to connect with you as well tonight on our live stream at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time right here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for your time, guys.